Welcome, my beautiful brothers and sisters, to the Aquarian Adams. My platform to become your spiritual server. Let's just take a moment to vibe to the music. You don't have to do too much. Just chill, relax, have fun. Tap into the hard space. Don't you know that you are able, beautiful, creative, divine spark of the infinite. Always moving, always doing, always evolving. Keep on moving forward. Stay focused on your smile like Yahoo! Like no one is around. It's okay. It's all good. Love self. Love each other. It's infinite. Beautiful. Can you smell that beautiful last prana, baby? That's why we're tapping to infinite waters, baby. It's all good. What's up? Enlightening the collective consciousness. <laughs> Uh, shout out to Infinite Water, shout out to the Lead King, shout out to Peace Dealer, Olivia, shout out to Christopher Witecki, shout out to all those amazing people, Ryan Cropper, G.G. Young, I'm just listing off people that I like on YouTube, shout out to Joe Rogan, uh, shoot, shout out to Markiplier, you know, shout out to Exervia. I don't know if that's how you actually say it, but, uh, yeah. <sighs> how are y'all doing? Welcome to your weekly astrology forecast for yesterday, June the 25th through Sunday. Actually, no, technically, excuse me, Monday, July 1st of 2018. Thank you so much for joining me on this video. And, um, we're ready to another week. I'm really excited. Uh, I have a slightly new setup here. I got a new tripod, so honestly, I think it looks great. Um, I have the music playing in the background. Finally, back in my studio, and my studio isn't nothing super, super great, honestly. It's, but it's my studio. I'm just sitting here in the dining room of our one-bedroom apartment. We don't have an office, but. As soon as we got this apartment, we was like, oh, I'm gonna, I was like, I'm going to turn the dining room into my spot. My fiance was like, all right, that's cool. The kitchen's over here. There's a closet over here. The living room's over there. So it's like, but it works. This is our fortress. This is our place. This is our secret space. And this is my spot where I can come on here and perform for you all, entertain, and hopefully deliver enlightening and positive messages. Let me turn the music down just a tad. And, um... You know, just hope to express the positivity because there's a lot of crazy shit that's happening in the world and the universe right now. We're being asked to evolve. Like, the funny thing was is that I thought 2017 was an interesting and difficult year only because I went through probably one of the most intense dark, dark nights of the soul, like an extended dark night of the soul last year. But this year, like... I'm just happy that I'm actually equipped to make it through these changes and to actually kind of like make it through this transformation. We're all going through this together, but like, I will say this, I never really believed in Western medicine, but if I wasn't on Western medicine right now, I don't know where I'd be. <laughs> Probably in some sort of loony bit somewhere, honestly. So that just kind of goes to show how even things that you just really just don't expect of yourself or don't expect yourself to kind of fall into, you know, there are benefits to it. So, even shout out to that, you know. Um, but, I still think that 2018 is a very powerful year, a very transformative year, and a beautiful year. I think it will be a year that we look back on and be like, yeah, there was something really, something really particular about that year really a pivotal moment. I think 2017 was the build-up to this year, where it was like, I remember by the end of 2017, everyone was like ready to get out of it, because like, it seems like every single year, subsequent year, has been like that, or maybe it's just been since the 2012 shift, it's like every single year, it's like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to get to the next year, oh my gosh, I can't wait to get to the next year, and like, 
this year I think we're gonna come out of it and be like, damn, we made it through that year. It's gonna be like a standing ovation at the end of this year. I don't think it's gonna be like we're ready to get out of it. I think it's gonna be like, woo! What a marathon! What a fucking marathon! And we're almost at July already. Can you believe it? If you are below the age of 20 and you're watching this, save for every single moment because at the age of 26, it's just it just flies by. It's flying by so fast. And I I work at a restaurant where a great bit of our clientele is probably over the age of like 45 or 50. And I even had a conversation with a few people this past week about how fast time just flies by. But an interesting thing is that even though we age, I think on the inside we remain youthful. And that's why the sun is represented by the sign of Leo, and why Leo represents children. Because children carry with them an incredible wisdom. And that wisdom is to really truly be authentic, and to really just be yourself, and to have fun in the moment. Of course, the North Node is here in Leo, and the South Node is in Aquarius. And we're going into the age of Aquarius. I think it's interesting how that happened, right? Definitely think the next time that the South and North Node comes to these positions, it's going to be a very interesting ballgame. Things are definitely going to be shifted. The world's going to look completely different, that's for damn sure. I haven't even looked that far into the astrology charts to see what's going to be happening. Um, but yeah, this is a very powerful week. And I have notes here and stuff, and normally I like term every day a particular thing. Um... I didn't do that, so I'm gonna kind of come up with it off the top of my head, on the fly. I had a couple of drinks of sake before coming onto this video, admittedly. Um, I actually just came off of like a four to five day fast of, I ate vegan to the best of my ability, although I think I might have potentially ate something that used egg, but I ate vegan to the best of my ability. I had no alcohol, I withheld from sexual release, and I meditated as much as I could, I drank water as much as I could, um, it was very powerful. And even as my own little added step, I withheld from social media. I logged off, I didn't delete it from my phone, but I logged off my Facebook and didn't touch Facebook. I didn't touch Reddit because those were my two worst enemies, um, didn't go on Instagram, and limited my YouTube usage actually too. So. But from that cleanse of all of that, I really learned that, let me just say from the food aspect, that you're able to go farther in the astral realms with the, with the lighter your body is. And that, 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 that sounds basic, right? But it's like, I think there are definitely, now you can eat whatever you want. I mean, I still eat chicken. I had chicken for lunch today and it was really good. Uh, I still eat chicken. I still eat seafood. Um, I don't eat pork or beef, um, but, and I'm working on it, you know, I, I would like to, I would like to get to a point where I'm, like, mostly vegetarian vegan, where I occasionally have, like, fish or something like that. If I live near the ocean, I would prefer to, like, to do just pescatarian and, you know, fish for my fish, you know, but, um, I did notice that my dreams were far more vivid, they were like really out there. I even had this dream where someone someone was literally showing me, and I've, I've seen it before and I've looked at it, but someone was literally pointing my vision into the direction of the Pleiadian stars. Like that was actually in my dream, and my guides were actually talking to me about, hey, maybe you should, you know, tap more into that Pleiadian energy. And then I went to the Arcturian energy and the Syrian energy, I kind of like went all over the place. Found even a new YouTube channel that I really it really just kind of sparked my interest. Um, but, so uh, what is it? Universe Inside You. So shout out to those people over at Universe Inside of You. But, I did notice that through that cleanse that as I was coming off of those things, and I was really going inside and internal to really activate this transformation and this initiation even, I noticed that I did feel like myself becoming lighter, but I also noticed that when you are coming off of these things, and when you do these fasts or these cleanses, different emotions that were weighed down by all of these blockages that you put on top of it, they come up to the surface more. So you have to like really address them. 
one of the main ones that I had to address was is this repetitive cycle I have been and going from restaurant to restaurant to restaurant. And I know I'm doing a little bit of my just talking about my own personal life right now, but I promise I will bring it back in. But I've been going through the cycle of going from restaurant to restaurant to restaurant where what I want to do for a living is make videos, write, you know, help people you know, discover themselves, I want to empower people, whether it's through astrology, whether it's through writing, whether it's through music or dance or anything like that, you know, honestly, it's not just restricted to astrology, poetry, but I've been finding myself kind of going from restaurant to restaurant in this repetitive cycle, now that Mars has gone retrograde, or it will go retrograde at the time of me making this, because right now it's 457, so technically it's stations retrograde in eight minutes from this point and that I'm saying it in this video right now. By the time I upload the Mars will already be retrograde, so um I know you guys probably over me rambling about my own life, my own personal stuff, but I want to just say that this if I had to give this the theme of this week anything is that I had to give this a theme. I, I hear the word hope, but I feel like this honestly goes beyond hope. I feel like this goes beyond hope. And maybe that's what it is. I feel like the great thing about this week is that it starts off with the moon in Sagittarius, which coming off that moon in Scorpio, which was like deep, was coming over, you know, it's coming over Jupiter, opposed Uranus, and you know, it also made trines to Neptune retrograde, and of course it made trines to Mercury, so it's like we're definitely, we're de this is definitely a very emotional time right now. We're trying to really figure out these deeper wants, these deeper desires. How can we just feel better about our life? How can we just feel better about our situation? How can we feel better about the way that things are? Even if it's not where we necessarily want to be, how can we feel better about it? You know? And when the moon slips into Sagittarius, I think it's amazing that the moon slipped into Sagittarius before Mars went retrograde because... Mars is the only energy that can keep going forward for two years without having to go backwards. Venus is, I think, about 18 months or so. Um, but yeah, Mars does not like to stop. It does not like to stop and ponder its action-making and its decision-making. It doesn't like to stop and be like, maybe I should think this through. No, Mars wants to just like, go, let's go, let's do this, woo! If you know any Aries, that's how they are, man. It's like, no, let's go, let's do this thing, let's just go, let's get it done. I hung out with one of my really good friends, um, maybe, uh, maybe, might have been almost a month ago now, but a few weeks back, we hung out, and uh, he was telling me about the process of him. He just got a new house with his uh, lovely fiance, which is awesome. Congratulations to them. And, uh, yeah, she was a little worried about it and stuff like that, and she was like, oh, should I look at some of the places? And he was like, dude, we need to hop on this right now. Let's go. Let's do it. And they got the house and it's awesome. So it's like, that's kind of what that Aries energy is. So Aries is not like to stop. So this Mars retrograde is a stationing, direct, a stationing retrograde at 9 degrees. So that's really, that's really actually major. Because if you think about the number 9, it's a completion point, but also a beginning point at the same time. It's almost like a bridge because nine it completes the number cycle as far as single digits go and it completes the number cycle in general because 10 is just a one and a zero next to each other one and a 10 is really just it's, it's two digits it's just, it's a one and a zero 10 isn't necessarily even a new number it's not a new number when you think about it the only numbers that we have are zero which is a placeholder one two three four five six seven eight nine 10 isn't technically a new number. It technically isn't. It's just two of the same digit. It's just two of the previous digits within that sequence next to each other. So, with Mars satiating retrograde at 9 degrees of Aquarius means that we are literally have come to a bridge in our life. And we're like, we're looking down at what's below the bridge, and there are crocodiles. There are hippos. There's a weird tentacle that just like comes up. And it's like, um, 
do we want to cross this thing? The ropes probably don't look stable. There are, there are several planks missing in the bridge. And we're like, uh, is this thing gonna hold up? Is this thing gonna stand the test of time? If I walk across this bridge, am I not gonna just collapse and careen to my very, very much so potential death? Like, that's really what this is. Um, so we're having to readjust and re-examine because Aquarius rules the future. It rules people in society in many ways. The collective. And Mars is all about the self and the ego. So when Mars goes into Aquarius, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's just like, it's about like, what can I do for myself that not only benefits myself, but benefits the collective. And I think that's what we're having to learn right now, is that, honestly, the most selfish thing that you can do is to not be yourself. Because it's by not being yourself that actually makes you incapable of being of service to everyone else around you. Because we all have a gift to give to the world. We all have something to share. But what happens is that people get so caught up in the ego, people get so caught up in the monopoly game of life and trying to fulfill a role that they think that they have to fill because we have to consider that this is conjunct the South Node in Aquarius. So this is about what we think we have to be, what we think is best for the collective. Think about that. This is also based off of the society that we have created and the order and the politics. And po politics go beyond politics as far as Republican and Democrat. This is spiritual politics. This is emotional politics, mental politics. It's not just politics like that. It's not. Commercial. It goes beyond that. And Aquarius is the second house of Capricorn, and the second house is value and confidence and self-worth, in many ways kind of almost representing the foundation. The foundation of a lot of the truths and the knowledge that we've created and for the, uh, the base of this collective is based off of the traditions that we have created in Capricorn. That's why Saturn and Pluto are here. Pluto is a wrecking ball, just wrecking shit. Like, all right, that's got to go, that's got to go, that's got to go, that's got to go. And Saturn is just kind of like picking up the pieces and kind of like placing things. It's like, all right, well, this is how we're going to restructure things. Saturn coming behind Pluto, right? So we're kind of come to this impasse. If you, did, if you watch my daily, um, I drew the card of the impasse which is really perfect for this because our divine masculine initiation action energy, it's like we want to move forward, we want to cross this bridge into a new reality, into a new world that is better for everybody. And honestly, it's, it's not like things are like, it's not, it's not like anything that things are as bad as we have been projected upon it being. I think actually we are more united than we think we are, but we are falling for these projections. And then this is, has a lot to do with the fact that we're in this transition period from the age of Pisces to the age of Aquarius. Well, Pisces, it's very magical, yes, but it's like also, it's like that television that's like right in front of your screen and you can't even see outside of that black box. So if the television screen is right in front of you, you can't see what's outside of it. And you are forced to project out into the world the media that's right in front of your face. We have to sit, it's like what your parents said, don't sit that close to the fucking TV. Because if you sit that close to the fucking TV, you're going to fuck up your eyes first of all. And then you're just going to be, the program's going to go that much deeper. So what we're learning how to do is back up from the TV. We're in Plato's cave and we're like having to back up from that wall that we've been looking at. We're having to back up and come into the light. We have to consider that even though it's the age of Pisces, it is on that axis with Virgo. So, talking about facts and reality. A lot of the facts and reality that we think is, are subject to change because Virgo is mutable. But right now, what we're going to is fixed stare and fixed fire. That's why it's interesting how, like I said, we're going to the age of Aquarius. The North Node is there. I mean, excuse me, the South Node is there, but the North Node is in Leo. It's opposite. 
So we're having to be reminded, it's like, yeah, we're going through this time where it's like, yeah, we can create a world that's beneficial for all, and we accept everyone for the uni uniqueness of who they are, for the... I like to think of Mars in Aquarius as the mad scientist. It's the mad scientist who's, like, really trying to, like, who's so unique and is so just, like, stuck in what they're trying to do. Mars in Aquarius is really this mad scientist trying to bring this thing to life. He's like, it is alive! Like, that's what it is, you know? But we all have a mad scientist within us that are that's having to just pause and be like, you know, maybe I shouldn't continue this experiment the way I have been. It's not so much that you can't complete this experiment or continue it, but you have to rethink the way that you've been acting, behaving, initiating. You have to rethink this energy. For two months, we're gonna kind of feel like this deflation it's almost kind of like this volcano has been ready to burst and wants to burst and wants to burst and wants to burst. Gets to the ninth degree of Aquarius and then it's like, yeah. It doesn't actually, what happens is that it doesn't necessarily go down. It just turns in that spot for such a long time. So by the time that Mars comes out of shadow, it explodes and then we manifest. Coming to the tenth degree of Aquarius where we officially manifest. And we really begin to initiate. Bam, Pasco, collect two hundred dollars. Fuck that. Connect, co collect a uh, billion dollars or infinity, as I like to say that I am a spiritual infinitaire. Collect infinity and move on. And manifest your desires. This is a little bit more of an intuitive channeling. I haven't really been talking too much about transits. Mostly, it's been about Mars retrograde, admittedly, but. It's interesting, like I said, we are coming, we are coming to this head, and it's almost like it's kind of like you have to go to the bathroom, and then it goes away, and you're like, "Fuck! Why did it go away?" Because you know in the back of your head that it's a false sense of security. So that's what's happening. I feel like we really feel like we're on the edge of this explosion, but this Mars retrograde is almost like this false sense of security, where it's like we have to go. I have to go, I have to go, man. I have to explode into the world. I have to do this thing. It's like the universe is like, no, you 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 have some rethinking, so you have some recalibrating to do. Why do you think it's retrograding back into you know Capricorn? To the twenty-eighth degree of no less. Two plus eight is ten. What do you think is gonna be activated when Mars hits the tenth degree of Aquarius? It's 10 and 10. It officially activates it. It's incredible how this all lines up with the numerology, too. It's really freaking awesome, actually. It's really cool if you really think about it. What else is happening this week? Well, on top of all that, we have a full moon in Capricorn. I'm going to make a longer video on this, but we do have a full moon in Capricorn that is occurring at 6 degrees. This is also going to be conjunct Saturn retrograde, and it's also going to be King Kong in the North Node. This is going to occur around 12.55 a.m., so it's kind of like Wednesday into Thursday. Um, well, at least this is Easter Standard Time, so if you're like, you know, on the West Coast, it'll still be the 27th for you. Um, this is pretty big, because this means that things are kind of coming to a head from the new moon that we had in Capricorn six months ago, so it's kind of like the culmination of that. And then we kind of go off into, like, you know, until the next time that we get to the new moon. It's kind of like what happens is, that, like, the new moon is kind of like the, um, actually, I can, I can show you right here. The new moon is kind of like, you know, this is like, say this is like the exposition, and here's the inciting action. That's like the new moon. And then you go up and up and up and up and up, and you hit the full moon, and then you have this resolution, you go down, and then the third reaction. So that's kind of, this is, this is where we are, we're in this part of the chart as far as the Capricorn energy, you know, right? Capricorn Cancer axis, and then it'll go back to here when we get to the next, to the next new moon. So, in order for you to really see like how you order your life and where, how things are organized, you kind of want to look at where you were with the new moon that happened in Capricorn, right? You want to look at where you were at that point, because this is like in many ways the culmination of that. But it's also a full moon is a time of release, but it's also a time of planting seeds. It's not just 
the release period. It's not just being illuminated to what's happening and having to release things. It's also a time of uh, planning, planting, so that the next time that we get to the new moon, it's like, technically you've already planted during the full moon, technically, and then the new moon is kind of like when you see the first sprouts come out. It's when you see the first saplings come out, right? So this is really important because it is going to be conjunct Saturn, which means that, like, you know, the moon already doesn't like to be in Capricorn. And this is going to be conjunct Saturn, which rules Capricorn. So this is like our emotions, and we're kind of like, this oh, This is like perfect right here, actually. We went to Chili's earlier today, right? And there was a group that was leaving as we you know, were like in the middle of our meal. And two of the little kids were crying, and they were really upset as they were leaving. I, was, I didn't see what had happened. So I asked my fiance, what happened? Well, how come they're crying? And she was like, oh, they were playing with the little games. Because Chili's has like a thing where they have like the little um, kiosk thing kind of screen on the table. They have games and stuff like that. And you can pay through it as well. And the kids were upset because they wanted to take the actual things with them and continue playing the games. But their parents were like, you can't take them because they belong to Chili's. And they started crying about it. That's kind of what this is <laughs> in many ways. Because the moon and Capricorns are like, I don't want to grow up. I don't want to do this. I want to take my games with me. But Saturn's like, you can't take these games with you because you've been playing these games for such a long time. I guess you can take these games with you, but you're probably going to repeat some of these same karmic cycles if you do that. By the way, just letting you know. So we're going to be crying. We're going to be mowing. And then the king comes to the north node, which is interesting because the, the, you know, the north node is in Leo. So it's about your youthful self and it rules children so it's kind of like we're gonna be emotional upset that we can't take our old games with us because we have felt some sort of sense of security by them for such a long time but then this awkward look at our hearts gonna be like hey there are cooler games on this side by the way we have really cool games over here we also have snickerdoodle cookies by the way fuck that game on that kiosk that belongs to them it's okay it's also just an ignorance. The kids didn't know any better. They didn't know. They thought they could take them. They thought they could take them. We think we can take certain games to the next level, but we actually can't. We're trying to take Monopoly to the next level, but we can't. It's a new game. It's a win-win situation. I'm actually pretty good at Monopoly. At least the game, anyways. But we're kind of seeing that as we are growing my tripod for what happened there. That as we're growing as a collective consciousness, we're realizing that we can't play the same games that we used to. So this full moon is really us realizing that we can't do that. We can't take these same games that we played to the new world. Because simply they just don't work. The rules have changed. The rules of engagement have changed. The rules of engagement with people with each other, the rules of engagement with the world. The rules of engagement with ourselves haven't really changed, but we're actually, if anything, we're learning more about who we are. The moon will also trine Jupiter that day, it'll trine Neptune that day, and it'll King Kong's Venus, so it's definitely going to be a day where it's like, we start off kind of like with a bang, especially like, because we're going to go to, so this is going to be an interesting week where you really want to pay attention to your dreams, because since these... We have the full moon occurring, like I said, if you're in the eastern time zone, it's occurring, you know, really early in the morning, just after midnight, just before 1 o'clock a.m. So, your dreams are going to be rather intense, just letting you know. Why? Because this is happening in Capricorn, the sun is in Cancer, which in many ways, it's kind of like the portal to the dream world, or the portal to the spirit world. So, yeah, be prepared to have some wacky-ass dreams this week. Not only that, but Mercury is going to move into Leo, and this also happens overnight. I can't remember what exactly time it is. I'll show you when we head over to the chart just for a little bit. But on Friday, Mercury goes into Leo, and as soon as it does that, it begins its trying to Chiron, and it begins its square to Uranus. And this also happens overnight. So pay attention to your dreams. Seriously, like, uh, Wednesday and the Thursday and then Thursday and the Friday. Because these transits happen really earlier in the day, and you're going to have really intense sad dreams. When the Mercury, when Mercury goes into Leo, that's us all speaking from our heart space. 
people are going to be speaking from their heart. And it's not... And when I say that, I want to prepare you. We all have darkness in our heart. By the way. No one's completely light and no one's completely dark. But it's whether you really choose to... I guess express it? Or at least cast it out. You know? Yeah, I might have darkness and stuff within me. I'm Scorpio. But I might have darkness within me. Whether I decide to cast it out and speak it, is another thing. I'll put myself on blast, because we all have insecurities. Like I said, it's like, I've been, besides this little fast thing, like I said, I had a couple of things of sake before this, and that's probably not something that will be necessarily accepted within the spiritual community, that you shouldn't drink. Although apparently smoking weed is accepted. It's kind of interesting. And I honestly rather smoke than drink, but, at the same time, I, 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 I went down that road. And those of you who knew me, um, like I said, I went down that road. Like, I, uh, I, those of you who knew me when I was I live here, or Stone Shaman, I was like, and I actually think that when I was doing that, that was the last time that Mars actually went retrograde, actually. Kind of like in the midst and the height of that. And it happened from Sagittarius to Scorpio, which for me is my 12th house. Really interesting how this works. Um, Mars retrograde is going to affect everyone differently. Going back to that, if you want to know how it's going to affect you, um, I can help you out with that. I can give you, you can come on my channel. We have, if you come visit me on my website, theaquarianatus.com, I have multiple you know, services where we, I can take a look at your chart. We can see how um, you uh, how you really behave and how you act based off your natal chart and how the current transits are affecting you or even we can do a tarot reading it doesn't matter but like I said this is going to affect everyone differently but back to the Mercury going into Leo we're all going to be speaking from our hearts so it's not just people going to be speaking their light they're going to be speaking their darkness as well because I don't know if you ever seen this but like a Leo that is depressed is one of the saddest things to see it's pro it probably rivals that of when a Sagittarius is depressed. Sagittarius is a little bit more understandable because Sagittarius, at least in the northern hemisphere, occurs during the time of winter, which is the time when the sun's not out as much, so that's why Sagittarius represents that hopeful energy. But when a Leo is depressed and they're not like the diva center stage shining their light in the spotlight when they're in despair it's really sad because i just want to tell them it's like you're a leo shine your fucking light man so people are going to be speaking from their heart whether there's light there or whether there's dark there and we're going to have to learn how to work with that deal with it alchemize not take everything so personally that's the interesting thing about this. This Mars retrograde is occurring in Aquarius and the Capricorn. So if this was happening in, I guess, Taurus to Aries, I would say, I would understand if you took it personally. But people are definitely going to be lashing out on social media, on the internet and stuff like that in the world. Don't take it personally. They're working out their inner cosmos, their inner order. So don't take it personally. We're all going through this together, my beautiful brothers and sisters, my beloved. We're all going through this together. So, try not to take it personally. Really try not to take it personally. Um, on Saturday, the moon's going to go into Aquarius. Um, it's going to immediately oppose Mercury, which is, you know, when it's Leo, it'll square Uranus, it'll trine, I mean not trine, it'll um, sextile Chiron. Um, that's also the day that Mercury uh, makes its squares to Uranus and Chiron, at least officially, like the exact. And um, as it goes throughout, the moon is going to come on top of the south node. It's going to oppose the north node at the same time. It's going to conjunct Mars retrograde, which just happened happened as well. Um, June 30th, Saturday, is going to be kind of one of those tested days where we're testing ourselves emotionally and mentally. Um, the past few Saturdays have kind of ended like that, where it's like, not super major transits have been happening, but it's a lot of transits that the moon has been making, so it's like, we have been, it's been like emotionally tested, like testing. Um, and then of course, you know, we end off July 1st with the moon squaring uh, Jupiter. We have Venus, which is coming into a king, comes with Pluto retrograde, and the moon is also on that same day going to oppose Venus. So it's like, this is really a week where 
I like to say that this goes beyond hope because I think that the world that we want to create is absolutely fucking possible, but we have to kind of, we have to take a step back. We can't cross this bridge yet because if we cross this bridge at our current state, even if we make it across, whatever is in the forest across from this bridge, we're going to get fucking eaten alive. And I know that might sound a little morbid, I'm telling a little too little of my Scorpio energy, but we will get fucking eaten alive. We need time to figure this out. And that's okay. It's okay to take time to figure your shit out. You know? It's like, damn, dude, like, I'm 26 years old, and I feel like this pressure to try and figure myself out. My fiance, she's 24. She's feeling this pressure to try and figure things out. But I talk to people at work, and they're like, oh, you have time and stuff. And I'm looking, I was like, no, I don't have time, because time is moving so much faster now. Like, it's crazy. But I think this is a time where we really need to just tap into the moment and realize that we're not fixated to anyone's timeline but our own. We're really not. Because if we're fixated at other people's timeline, we would actually check out of this life the same time that they do. And I guess, yeah, people, I guess there are technically people that die at the same time in this world, absolutely, but they might be in completely opposite sides of the world. They could also be in the same street, but, and they might have some type of weird connection that, even if they've never met each other, that's just a weird channel. But, you're on your own timeline. So it's like, you don't have to worry about trying to be a certain person or be a certain way by a certain time. That's why, like I said, this Mars retrograde, which is really the main highlight of this week, in addition to this full moon in Capricorn, is that, like, dude, whose timeline are you on? Are you trying to be what everyone wants you to be? That's the dark side of Aquarius. The dark side of Aquarius is all of us in that dystopian future that looks like it's utopian, where we're all wearing the same color, all the buildings look the fucking same, they choose your profession, and you're not allowed to be out past 8 o'clock. This, this is, that's, it's the giver, honestly. Like, the South Node Aquarius is the giver. I don't know if, I think it's on, I think it's on Netflix, and I don't think it's on Hulu. I don't have Netflix anymore, but I actually watched it, like, the new rendition of it. Go watch that movie. That is the South Node in Aquarius. That's the South Node in Aquarius. Is all of us living in this future where we're all the fucking same, we talk the fucking same, and we can't be our unique selves. But we, for some reason, think that if everyone's the same way, we can create this utopian world, this utopian vision, because we're all the same and we fit inside the same box. That is so far away from the heart, it's ridiculous. The light side of Aquarius, which wants to embrace, is be ingenuitively you. Be innovatively you. The dark side of Leo, of course, is like a very repressive and dictatorial kingdom or queendom. That's the dark side of it. But right now we're being asked to really find our inner royalty and to come more into that. And to not believe in this perpetuation that society is going to hell. If anything, we're coming out of hell. And we're going into purgatory. If anything, that's what we're doing. If anything, that's what we're doing. That's what this awakening is. Shedding all of this, this stuff that's weighed us down for such a long time. If anything, we're coming out of hell. If anything, that's what we're coming out of. It's not even the underworld, it's hell. Because the underworld isn't even inherently a bad thing. And that's just me channeling Pluto and Scorpio right now. And the underworld is not inherently a bad thing. But this idea of hell, the things are so chaotic and so bad and so terrible, that's a mindset that we need to come out of. Because if we, even if it was true, Staying in that mindset is not going to fix anything. Mars retrograde in Aquarius is us fixing our is us fixing our mind because Aquarius is definitely about the mind as an air sign. So we're even having to learn how to think differently, how to initiate better thoughts, so we can attract the light that we really want. Let's hop on over to the chart. 
I ran this chart at 4.44 p.m. At the time of me saying this right now, Mars is technically retrograde. But let's just look at this. The moon right here is in Sagittarius. So we have 20 energy. We have 20 energy. It's really kind of nice right here. And look at this. We do have, you know, this square going on between Venus and Leo, which is really asking us to... Venus is the receptive energy, so it's asking us to receive our heart. And it's squaring Jupiter retrograde. So it's like, you know, Jupiter retrograde is wanting to uncover these deeper treasures. It's wanting us to embrace our insecurities. And squares aren't inherently bad. It's actually an integration period. It's actually a learning period. Whereas six thousand trines are just kind of like these energies naturally get together. Uh, squares are kind of like us in the classroom learning, and we might have a little bit of difficulty integrating this new concept that we're learning. We might have to go home and study for a little bit, but it's actually great reward. That's the thing about squares. Squares aren't inherently bad. In fact, if you work on squares, you get great reward. That's the kind of the power of the squares. That's kind of the power of, you know, the mutable access of perception, the carnal access of, um, you know, power, and then the fixed access of currency. That's kind of what it goes down to. It's like, yeah, they said that, yeah, Scorpio and Aquarius might not necessarily see eye to eye and get along, or Mars and Leo might not necessarily get along, or Mars and, or, um, excuse Scorpio and Leo might not necessarily get along, and Leo and whatever might not get along, Leo and Aquarius because they oppose each other, and they might not necessarily see the eye to eye, but that's the interesting about these squares is that actually if you work on them, and you, it, it's not easy, but that's the great thing about it, is that like, if it was easy, it's almost like you, you kind of take it for granted more. Take this from someone who has their son at 24 degrees of Scorpio, whose partner has their son at 27 degrees of Aquarius. So our sons, they square each other, essentially. Uh, it hasn't been easy, but it's very rewarding. We have a lot of fun together, you know? We actually, in many ways, do help to complete each other. We might not necessarily see eye to eye on things. We're both fixed signs. It's not necessarily easy, but it's almost like... We, we've even learned how to not take each other for granted because we know what's possible, you know? And we've seen what we've come through. So it's like, yeah, this square right here between Venus, which is asking us to receive our heart more, and between Jupiter, which is asking us to actually embrace our deeper insecurities that we don't want to reveal into the world, you know? It, this is, you know, and it, it, it's very slight, but, you know, it is technically sextiling Pluto, which Pluto, you know, rules Scorpio. So even Pluto's like, eh, you know, maybe you want to reconsider. Maybe if you actually embrace these insecurities and kind of show them out into the world, they might transform your life, you know? The moon here is asking us to really kind of look forward and just uh, have hope that things are actually moving in a positive direction. Let's uh, refresh this. So at 5.30, I was at 505 where Mars stationed uh, retrograde. And so yeah, the moon's still at 20 degrees, so nothing really has changed from this point. But we also have this right here, which is beginning to happen. It's not exact, but we do have the sun opposing Saturn. And this is huge. Because besides, you know, Venus went through this spot, and now Mercury went through this spot. Now the sun's catching up to the spot, finally. We've been having these energies opposing the Capricorn energies for a while. At first, it was just the moon. But then, you know, Venus came through the spot, Mercury came through the spot, and now we have the sun in our awareness. So it's interesting how, like, the moon, which is our emotions, has been aware of this because it's been opposing the spot for a while. Venus, which is our receptive energy, so we began to receive this internally, whether we were aware of it or not. And then our mind, our communication went to the spot. So our mind, which was in cancer, wanted to communicate our emotions, began to oppose the spot. Now we're finally catching up in our awareness to this spot. What is this even talking about, the Saturn retrograde? This is about us reconfiguring, in many ways, uh, how we keep a sense of order in our life. And whether or not we can create a sacred space and actually create 
a sense of emotional satisfaction that still allows us to kind of put ourselves out into the world and be okay with ourselves. You know, not be afraid to step up to the plate, step up to the challenge. Because Saturn is definitely a challenge. It's a very challenging planet, but honestly, if you can learn to really appreciate and love Saturn and even just embrace Saturn because it's here, you know, you know, this is definitely going to be us, because you have to think about it. this is the sun, which is the biggest energy, opposing the second biggest energy of Saturn, right? And the sun is technically, even though it's incredibly loose, it's trining the biggest energy of uh, Jupiter, which is sextile and Saturn. So it's like, there's this in interesting energy happening between the, big, the three biggest energies, with Saturn retrograde, the sun, and then Jupiter retrograde. A very interesting energy asking us really to yeah em em embrace that the fact that we have a wide range of emotions this is not about feeling happy all the time I'm sorry this is not about unicorns all the time I'm sorry sometimes you have to I don't even like the same but kind of pull yourself up by the, the bootstraps and get going get rolling that's how it is sometimes you know can't just sit around and play games all the time. Nothing wrong with playing games. But you can't just do that all the time. Take it from someone who likes to play games. I like video games. <laughs> probably, gonna, probably gonna play some video games later, but I had to make this video. I didn't have to make this video. I really wanted to make this video. Um, but I have to make this video in order for me to create the life that I want. That's the thing about it. I could just I could have just played video games today. I could have just did nothing today and not do much. But on my days off from work, I'm doing this stuff. Even on my days at work, I'm doing this stuff. You gotta do what you gotta do in order to create the life that you want, in order to create that sacred space that you want. Let's move this forward just a day. Let's see what changes. The moon uh, is ingressed into Capricorn, which means that it's entered into its new moon phase. All right. And you can see that Mars definitely has officially gone retrograde, so let's just move this forward. And like I said, I probably will make a actual video on this later. But the moon, it's pretty much full around this time. This is, like I said, 11.31 p.m. Like I said, this occurs around... It's actually, if I move this forward even there... It's 12.31... So as you can see, 17 solar minutes, 17 solar minutes, so if we just come in here real fast and put 55 a.m., it's, oh, it's pretty much exact, okay, whatever. But it's conjunct Saturn, look at that, look, it's conjunct Saturn. So this is a very powerful full moon that we're going to be experiencing. I'm going to make a further in-depth video about this. We also have to consider that Mercury is just about to uh, exit Capricorn, I mean Capricorn, Cancer. Blah. <laughs> Um, very powerful this is happening, like I said, on top of Saturn. We are really, it's just really us having to mature and grow up, even though we don't necessarily want to. And it's not so much that, like, we have to abandon the inner child, because that's not what this is about. That's why the North Node is King Kung's in this energy. Because it's like, hey, don't forget about me. Don't forget about your heart. Don't forget about what makes you really feel alive and jubilant and joyful and in the moment and excited to be on stage and excited to really express that fire and that love, that unconditional love for every moment. Don't forget about that. But at the same time, we do have to grow up. Take this from someone who doesn't want to grow up. It's a trap. It's a trap! <laughs> Let's move this forward. Look at that. Mercury has officially shifted. It's going to start its conjunction to the North Node, which is really powerful, which means that's also opposing the South Node. We'll move this forward a bit. You can see that the Moon is going to come on top of Pluto. This occurs at 4.55 a.m., so right before people wake up in the Eastern Time Zone. Um, and this is probably kind of around REM sleep for a lot of people, so really the dreams from, it's kind of crazy, the dreams from Tuesday into Wednesday, Wednesday into Thursday, and Thursday into Friday are going to be rather, rather, rather intense. Rather intense. The moon on top of Pluto, after being in its full moon phase and coming off of it, 
is really us realizing that we kind of almost in many ways have to destroy our preconceived notion on what emotions are. Because that's kind of coming to a head. And even having us, even us having to destroy emotions that are attached to our traditions. Not destroy the emotions, but not get super, 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 super attached to them to the point where we try to project this as reality and truth onto other people. Whew. Yeah. What's the 29th? Move this forward. See, the moon has ingressed into Aquarius and it is making its opposition to Mercury. So this is really us. The moon in Aquarius is going to be kind of nice because it's going to kind of bring about a lightness based off of what's happening in Capricorn, which is going to be kind of heavy and stuff. Bringing these, um, these issues of um, our foundation, of society, politics, order, um, how we kind of direct our physical material life. The moon coming to Aquarius is going to bring about a lightness, but it is going to be still conjunct the south node. So it's going to be like, we might have this desire to escape into um, social media or escape into um, this idea that we are going downhill, that society is fucked up, that the conservatives are ruining it for everyone, that the uh, liberals are ruining it for everyone, and oh God, like, can we just stop this bullshit? The immigrants are ruining this for everyone, the Muslims, the Christians are ruining this for everyone. Like, can we just stop? It's fucking bullshit. It's fucking bullshit. Fucking bullshit. <laughs> Let me adjust this thing. Um, this is a very powerful week, guys. It's a week of reevaluation of our masculine energy. It's a reevaluation of how we really direct our lives, how we take action. It's a reevaluation in many ways of our hearts. It's a reevaluation of our fire energy. So I like to think of whenever a planet goes retrograde that. While things seem like they slow down here, things speed up in the spiritual world. That's why you really want to pay attention to your dreams this week. That might be the theme of this week. Pay attention to your dreams. Because they're going to be, oh my gosh, speaking to you so much. You're going to get some divine downloads in your dreams this week. Some very divine downloads. Let's hop into the cards. Aries, for you. Aries, the card that I have for you for this is the seven of wands reverse so you might be feeling that you have to stand your ground this week and stand up for what you believe in and in many ways you do but be cautious of projecting uh, fights and potential arguments out that don't need to happen Aries this week I would actually recommend for you to do a social media cleanse and you can, you can do it for however long you want to do. I recommend at least three days. No Facebook. Whatever. What, take your top three social medias. And just like the top two of those. Don't go on it at all. And the third one minimal. Do minimal on it. That will actually really help you to sleep. Because then it's like. You're. you're it's going to sound crazy, but you don't have to necessarily stand your ground against opposition if you don't put yourself into the situation where you have to stand your ground. It's almost like you can just be you and be authentically you by simply not engaging with the opportunity to have to stand your ground, if that makes sense. And it's crazy because, Aries, you are the warrior and you love to be on the battlefield, but this is going to be a week where it's like, take a chill pill. 
Go to the beach and chill. Go to the lake and fish. And people are going to be like, Aries, we need you on the battlefield. Be like, dude, I'm on vacation. Fuck that. <laughs> Aries, that's the card for you this week. Taurus, the card that we have for you. We have the Six of Pentacles. So you're definitely going to be feeling like you want to kind of give to the world this week. Taurus, in many ways, in some way, shape, or form. But what I'm feeling is that, like, you definitely want to be able to give to yourself first before you give to the world. So do something for yourself this week. Do something charitable for yourself this week. Um, take yourself out on a date. Do something for your self-confidence, for your self-worth, for your self-value. Buy yourself something nice. Um, take care of yourself this week before you take care of others. If you take care of others, if you feel the need to be charitable, absolutely go ahead and do it. But just make sure that it's coming from the heart space. Make sure it's not coming from a place where you're wanting to impress other people. Do it because you really want to do it, not because you're trying to be this philanthropist, okay? Gemini. Gemini, we actually have the card of the chariot. This is actually pretty cool. This is a card rolled by Cancer. It's about taking action, action and kind of initiating. I like to think of it as like coming into your own. I think the chariot is kind of like coming into your own energy. So... Gemini, you definitely are going to be wanting to speak your truth. <laughs> Especially because in fact that Mercury is going to be going into your third house. So you're definitely going to be really communicative as far as speaking your heart and speaking your truth this week. So it's going to be a week where people are going to kind of be paying attention to you, Gemini. Mars is, you know, this isn't like some Mars going retrograde, but like I said, it's, um, excuse me, um, Mercury going into Leo is going to be really interesting for you because, like I said, it's your third house. So you're definitely going to be speaking from the heart, and you're also going to be picking up on other people's hearts, too. You're going to hear other people's hearts, like, thoughts and vibrations and intentions before they even tell you. So it's going to kind of give you, like, this leg up of perception. It's really kind of cool. That's what I have with you. Cancer. Cancer, we have the Ace of Cups. New love. Or perhaps just kind of emotional fulfillment. This is great. The sun is in your sign, so it's definitely reinvigorating you and like, kind of like really giving you this boost that you really have been wanting, that you really have been needing cancer. So this Ace of Cups for you is going to be kind of awesome because like people have been so trapped in their egos, and now people are going to start to kind of come inward. And that's your world. Like that's your world, the inner world, the inside, the mother, the womb. So this is actually going to be kind of nice for you this uh, Mars retrograde this, uh, this week and uh, for the next two months. It's going to be kind of nice for you because it's going to be like, it's going to bring people more to the inside, to the more internal, you know. It's going to bring people to that space. People are going to be really, people are going to be coming to you, telling you about how they feel about stuff, whatever. But the Ace of Cups is going to be nice because you're going to feel like you're actually in a position to potentially help these people or to really show them that it's okay to be vulnerable. Leo. Leo, the card that we have for you is actually death in reverse. That's interesting. So I'm going to draw an extra card for you just in case to see what's going on. <laughs> we have the tower in reverse. So this is going to be a major shifting week for you. That's all I can say is a major shifting week for you. An incredible shift. You're going through... A death and rebirth transformation like no one has ever seen Leo this week. It's gonna be quite amazing. It's funny because like when I get the death card, it's not necessarily bad, but I know people were kind of like, oh, oh, it's the death card. It's really just transformation, but I like to draw another card just to kind of give it clarity. And I drew the Terra, I mean, I drew the Tower card, which is another card that I would, you know, draw an extra card for for clarity but the fact that I get the tower card just kind of reconfirms that you're going through a major shift in your life this week you're going through a major transformation period and you really just want to ride the wave don't hold on to what's falling away and just embrace what's coming embrace the new embrace the moment because you are being reborn stronger more passionate more loving that's even possible and it is possible to so just embrace it and radiate that love. Virgo, the card that we have for you, we have the seven of pentacles in reverse. So you're going to be kind of wanting to harvest and manifest and kind of appreciate what you have planted. 
and you might be able to do that, but this is also going to be a week where it's like, eh, you're kind of having to like kind of check where things are going on too, because you have to say like this full moon is going to be trining your energy, so it's like you still have to kind of re-examine where things are going right now. You have to re-examine what you have planted. You won't have to re-examine even like the harvest that you might feel that you get this week. Not that the harvest is bad, but you're going to kind of want to you know look at the way that you're behaving and acting because maybe you have. Maybe the fruits aren't as big as you want to. Maybe you are in one of those competitions where you try to grow the largest vegetable or the largest fruit and it's not coming out as big as you want it to be. Maybe you should focus on the taste of that fruit instead of how large it is. Think about that. Libra. Ooh, Libra. We have the Two of Cups. This is awesome. This is beautiful. New love, emotional understanding, emotional fulfillment, the connection with the twin flame or soulmate. This is definitely going to be a week for you where you're going to be feeling the love. You're going to be feeling connected to other people. You're going to be uh, go out for a night this way all the time. Go on a date. Do something fun for yourself. Treat yourself even on a date. This will be kind of a cool week where actually if you treat yourself on a date, you might meet someone. You might meet someone who, whether they turn into a lover or not, this might end up just becoming a really awesome friend. But it's someone that you really need in your life. And it's definitely a karmic connection, you know. Scorpio, we have the Knight of Pentacles in reverse for you. This is Scorpio, Scorpio, Scorpio. And I can attest to this because I am, I represent Scorpio energy. You have been wanting to break through and manifest for such a long time. And the Knight is someone who is coming more into their capabilities as far as whatever element that is. So the Knight of Pentacles is someone who is coming into a more proficient um, application of their manifestation energy when it comes to the material world. So, Scorpio, you've been working on this. You've been going there, you've been going there, you kind of feel like you're on the edge, and now it's like you feel like you're about to break through. But you have to wait. The Knight of Pentacles in reverse is just a, confirm, a confirmation of patience. Honestly, you're going to manifest your you're going to manifest the life of your dreams. You're going you're going to manifest a Scorpio. It's just kind of a matter of timing. So just, just be patient. Wait. Keep doing what you're doing, even if it seems like it's not working out. And I'm telling this to myself, and I've been having some frustrations with this. Trust me, I'm right here with you guys. I'm right here with you. I've had some frustrations with manifestations that I want to bring into this world. But I know that things are paying off. I know the Nine of Pentacles in the verse is really just step by step. Day by day, just take your time. It'll be okay. You're not, you're, you're not, I know you're trying to beat the clock, or you're trying to get a certain time, or you're trying, maybe you're trying to impress certain people, but this isn't about that. This is about the quality of the work that you're putting out, the quality of the project that you're working on. I think if you begin to focus on that aspect, this manifestation will actually quicken for you. Sagittarius. Sagittarius, we actually have the Ten of Swords in reverse. This uh, signals two abrupt ends. Ten of Swords in reverse means that I feel like a belief that you've had about the world and even yourself is coming to an abrupt end because you realize that it's actually been robbing you of hope. It's been robbing you of trusting in the universe. It's been robbing you of believing that the future can be bright. So you actually have to eliminate this old thought pattern, this old belief structure because it does not work. And the only reason why you adopted this is because you were in a vulnerable time, and that's okay, and you were fed these different beliefs by um, people that might have been close to you, even though they didn't really necessarily mean to hurt you, but they don't necessarily carry the vibration of hope and visionary energy that you do, Sagittarius. So this is really about you eliminating self-limiting beliefs that no longer work for you, uh, that have been implemented on you or um, been... Uh, people might have used inception on you with these different beliefs. It's like that top that's spinning. You're going to just kind of like just stop it. You're going to like smash the top. It's like, no, that belief does not work anymore. Thank you for the time that you've been spinning around and for keeping me safe during this time. But I'm ready to grow and evolve and I'm ready to adopt a new belief structure that's really going to propel me into the future. Ironically, as Mars is going retrograde. If anything, it's going to give you great vision. Capricorn. Capricorn, we have the Will of Fortune in reverse. This is not bad. 
This just means that uh, great fortune is to be had, but you kind of have to wait on the timing of the universe. It's like you can't necessarily just completely will things into being right now. You can't just will things uh, or will your fortune into being. You kind of have to just wait to see how things transpire. And, um, yeah, this is the timing of the universe. This is Saturn retrograde in your sign. This is Pluto retrograde in your sign. This is full moon. So things are kind of coming to a head and to a culmination. You're going to feel this full moon the most, of course, because it is in your sign. But it being in the early, you know, the early part of your sign, that six degrees, which is uh, really this number of harmony and balance, you're learning how to, you have to first balance and have harmony and seek peace within yourself. Once you do that, then you'll be able to go out and create the world that you really want. Then you'll be able to go out into the world and really be able to create a society and this uh, sense of order and structure that gives everybody great fortune, right? So that's really what this is about. This is you. Uh, this is about you realizing that there's great fortune to be had, but you kind of have to find that peace within yourself first. Aquarius. Aquarius, I actually have the strength card in reverse. Which is actually the card of Leo, your opposite sign. Aquarius, this is about you having the strength and the ability to find and resonate and listen to your heart despite what everyone else is telling you. Despite the fact that the North Node is in your sign, despite the fact that Mars is retrograde in your sign. People are going to be trying to tell you, Aquarius, to act and be a certain way. And you're going to have to have the tenacity and the gonads and the testicular fortitude or the ovarian fortitude to just be yourself authentically and say fuck you in the most respectful way possible, but I'm going to follow my heart. That's what that's about. Pisces. Pisces, the card I have for you is the emperor in reverse. A lot of reverse cards. But reverse isn't necessarily bad. It's really more like, I like to think of like when a card is reverse, it's more like, it's more internal. So the Emperor in Reverse is really you having to... The Emperor in many ways rules the mind and communication and wanting to get things done, kind of acting things out. I think it's kind of interesting how the Emperor has like these horns, so it kind of even reminds me of Aries energy. So since Mars is going retrograde in your 12th house, this is you having to in many ways rethink and recalibrate your sense of spirituality. You rule spirituality, but your house is spirituality, which is the 12th house of in Aquarius, you're having to kind of rethink your actions and your behaviors around spirituality. That's really what this is about. So this is going to be you coming into a period where you're going to start to mastermind a little bit more. And really begin to think, so, okay, how can I begin to create a life myself? And how, how, what actions can I take that are different from what I've done before that will allow me to create even more magic than I'm already able to create? <laughs> because you're such a magical side anyways. And the card that I have for everybody. Oh, that card just flew out. Is answering the call. It says the time is now. The time is now. The time is not yesterday. It's not tomorrow. The time is now. Let's take a moment to appreciate this now. The time is now, beloved, my beautiful brothers and sisters. The time is now. It's not yesterday. It's not tomorrow. It's not five hours from now. The time is now. No matter where you are in your life, no matter what you have done, no matter what amount of darkness might be in your heart or even light, you can choose right now to radiate love in infinite exuberance. You can choose right now to be, to love, to appreciate, and answer the call of spirit, answer the call of goddess and God in the universe to be authentically you, to accept you for all of who you are. You can accept it right now. Answer the call right now. This is the time, my beautiful brothers and sisters, my beloved, I love you all so much. The time is now. 
for us to stand hand in hand. No matter how far we have come, no matter how much we have pulled to this earth, no matter what we have told ourselves, the stories that we have told ourselves about how we live in sin and how we're not worthy, none of that shit matters right now. All that matters is now. And if you have the ability to do this, and even if you can't do this, if you can imagine this, then you are a-okay in my story, in my eyes, in my book, in my heart. That is it for your reading this week, my beautiful brothers and sisters. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much to all of my recent subscribers. And if you would like a personal reading with me, we can take a look at your natal chart. We can see how the transits are affecting you. We can go into tarot. We can just talk. Sometimes you just need someone to talk to, right? You can follow the link in the description below to theaquarianadapts.com. And always remember, my beautiful brothers and sisters, you already know, to keep moving forward. <laughs> Even though Mars is going retrograde. To stay focused, Stan. Yahoo! Smile often. <laughs>